Don't, should I just look right into the camera? Yeah. My name is Billy Lee. Hi, I'm Jill Downen. Lauren Francis Adams. My name yeah. is Ayman Ye. Latoya Hobbs. Kim Beck. Eto Otetikbe. My name is Bailey Liu. So my question is for educators, um, and I would like to know what you are doing to expose your students to artists who are outside of the traditional Western canon of art. How do we teach young artists to sustain creativity over their lifetimes? How do we create an anti-racist, decolonial art education? So my question is for both artists and teachers, which is how do you remember or remind yourself that it was supposed to be fun or that you should be have fun making what you make? How do we hold ourselves responsible for our work that is not just for the intention of building up our career? How will you hold yourself and me accountable as we navigate our learning together? How can we make critiques more effective for students? How can we engage students better in the process of their own education and their own self-evaluation? How do we prepare students to create actions and spaces for open-ended collective joy, health, and wealth? No, I mean, I think it's important to expose students to um, artists on a local, regional, and national level, international level, um, just because we aren't always aware of what people are doing, first and foremost. But also, I feel like there's a deficit in terms of representation of artists of color and also women artists, so I think it's our job. Um, if you want things to change, we have to start in our academic institutions. So how are we um, showing students that there's more than just the old masters or um, the who's who in like these blue chip galleries who are considered like the best of the best? What is the moral responsibility that we have as artists? And how do we navigate the uneasy relationship between professionalizing as artists in an unequal art system and um, Shoot, I keep forgetting the line of that question. How do you practice curiosity? How do we best teach to the whole person? And my follow-up question would be considering the state of everything in the world and the cost and the politics and the ecological challenges we're all facing. What might be critical or sort of radical importance of, of pleasure and fun and, and making I think there's uh, there's more options out there, so we should be exposing students to that. And then I think it will change how we see art, um, how we see art in museums, and the types of things that people will start collecting as a result of that. There's so much focus on how do you build a career, how do you achieve, how do you become successful. And then the question for me was, what is success? It's hard. It's like in our life, it's so much pressure. Like, do this, do this, get this, get this. And if you don't have shows for a year, it's really nerve wracking. But there's a reason why we want to make things. Maybe that wasn't, it didn't start with, I want to get a big show. What experiences can we facilitate for our students to empower them with confidence in their abilities? How do we think through and navigate some of the, the concerns around complicity and um, the, the contradictions that are embedded within our practice and the ways that we professionalize as artists. And so a question that I might have for art education is how do we build in some of these tools and practices to rethink the ways that we can simultaneously move through these systems of power and unjust and unequal art systems while also actively building new practices and ways to challenge and transform that system. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that was good. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>